This might be the most satisfying super buff challenge yet, because we are going to make the longest and straightest map possible for the Ray of Doom. Now, I guess you could say I had a little bit of free time, so I had a little bit of fun while designing this map, more than just the track itself. Let me just show you, though, just how satisfying it looks when we have the Ray of Doom shooting down the entire straightaway. Just a hint of what's to come, so just to explain a couple of things about this map, uh, why is Quincy is dead? Shooting out a flamethrower, destroying the boardwalk and a house in the process? Well, things have been getting past his son Quincy's bow, so uh, he's trying to hone in the arts of the fire to teach Quincy, so that in the future nothing gets past his bow, but I guess in the process, he's been committing a little bit of arson. Also, I didn't finish this map completely yet, so let me take this time to uh, max out all the nodes. Now, if you didn't hear what I had to say last time about the longest map ever, uh, a recent update made it so that you can now have more nodes for the max. Before, it was 33. Now, I believe the number is 48. This was initially unintentional, but I guess the hedges also serve as a way to make sure this map is straight. So I can easily tell when, you know, a node is a little bit misaligned with the track. Simply just angle up the nodes so that they're parallel to the hedge, like this for example not gonna lie i kind of hope they don't increase the max nodes anymore because uh, it's gonna be annoying to keep making the, the longest map ever anyways i got back to you guys once this map is fully finished and there it is there is the maximum no count reached it still exits on the bottom right so let me just angle the last lane a bit more so that we get the perfect spot for the ray of doom here should be good i think right and yep i like it i like it now the only thing triggering me is that Either the hedges are a bit misaligned, or one of my 48 nodes ended up being, uh, not perfect. But I can't be bothered to fix it. Sorry, guys, you have to live with it. Adding all those nodes took so long that, oh no, the house is now on fire. All kidding aside, can I take a moment to point out, uh, another new feature in Map Editor recently? It's this last bar. It changes the verticality of the, uh, prop. I think in the first update when Map Editor came out, you couldn't do this, so then your fire would just, like, sit underneath the house, I think. But now you can, like, actually change the layout for props. That's not uh, on this screen, so that's nice. So let me just verify how many times this uh, red balloon here bounces back and forth. So uh, this is two. 46, 47, 48. 48 notes confirmed. And now here it is, the Ray of Doom map in its mighty glory. Just like last time, we're gonna play this on hard chimps mode so that we have uh, an idea of how practical this is to pull off in a real game scenario. For starters, an NG start is required because we can't start with Dortling Gun. I should also note that the hedges on that, this map are not just there for decoration, but they're also there to, I guess, once I do end up getting overclocks on my Ray Dooms, to like, block, have their line of sight blocked, like, behind the hedge, so that we get as many pops as possible on the Ray Doom. Not that it really matters at all, I'm just being extra, but why not? Let's make sure we get a Darling as far to the bottom right as possible so that there's no spot to the track where it isn't attacking, and uh, there it is. Just so you guys have a reference point also, here are the rounds that I tested other towers with on their best performing map. Obviously, Ray of Doom beats Glaive Lord and Crossmaster like by a landslide. Consider super buffing towers to their best map a start of a new series, I guess. I know a lot of you have been enjoying it, and it's definitely very fun and also very satisfying. If you're not new here, then you've probably heard me say this already, that I like uh, having something to play for. And that's why I like to challenge myself in these runs to not have infinite money, but to budget money correctly. So unlike what I did with the first two super buffing towers, what I'd like to do here is I would like to go for a temple before actually getting any any darling upgrades. This will save me a ridiculous amount of money because now it's 20% off of the 80 plus K on the Ray of Doom. I guess 100K if you include all upgrades, so at least 20K save there. Unfortunately, though, I do also have to go for Ultra Boost to Overclock before I get the Temple so I can, like, you know, kill two birds with one stone, use the Ultra Boost for the K Sacrifice, and pre-buff the Dartling Gun with 10 Ultra Boost stacks, so I don't have to worry about that later. They did the math, and that is the uh, most cost-efficient way to uh, build everything in. Isn't a really, really long map nice, though? You can do literally anything, and it would beat around, like, a Sun Avatar not even in a straight line. Not gonna lie, it is really scary seeing... Ceram's bounce back and forth so, so much. Maybe this isn't a guaranteed save in Temple just yet. Anytime now, anytime now. Oh, hold up. Houston, we have a problem. 
The Sun Avatar actually did not defend on the longest map ever. As you can see, I might be getting a little desperate here, but uh, I guess I have to drop a Dora Pickles. That increases the DPS of the Sun Avatar by a lot. Yep, now it's definitely a lot better because it also gets fortified damage. I'm also avoiding ultra boosting this thing so that the temple doesn't, you know, keep ultra boost stacks. That would be a problem. Please don't die to 104. Please don't die to 104. Please don't die to 104. Crap. Well, I'll just get started on some Darling Gun upgrades then, so I guess I can't save the several thousand to discount the 420, but we'll start with that. Because Plasma Accelerator does, like, all right damage. Like, look at that. 2,000 at points. Because it does have a lot of pierce. So I think that plus Savitar should clear out 104, right? Yep. Looks much better and not really that close. So for now, enjoy Ray of Doom at home, I guess. Pretty satisfying watching the damage count go up. And it putting in some work. It's no slouch. Don't underestimate its power because that little yellow beam does add up over time. And here it is. Time to transform. Took long enough. 160 rounds to get the temple. I am going to have to give just one more village buff here. Okay, that still doesn't reach. One range upgrade then. And there we go. You will now try to save up the 69-120 for the Rave Doom. You can already kind of see it's a DPS skyrocket just with the one temple buff. I think before, at most, it was doing, like, 2,000, but it's at least tripling that right now. I saw a tick of 6,000. Again, that DPS counter in the uh, top right corner is... Uh, just so you guys know how much damage we are looking at. I've also seen this commented a few times, and it, it seems like it's a common misconception that it's the monkey knowledge that allows the temple to see for walls. Otherwise, it does not. That is not true, because we're playing on chimps mode, but, well, it does not have monkey knowledge. And as you see, it's still... Shoots over the hedge. No matter what blocker prop I put between it, Sun Temple has the ability to see entirely over walls just to uh, squash that misconception. So therefore, there is no way for me to prevent this temple from doing damage. Funnily enough, even though I got this accelerator way later than the Avatar, it's already, uh, well, well surpassed in pops. Here it is taking out some Shark DDTs. Uh, something about non-fortified DDTs, like Shark DDTs, looks very trippy on this map. Round 140, and we still don't have the Radio Doom yet. That's how you know how poor we are in Chimps mode. Now we only have enough for the max temple and this defense so far, but luckily it's still enough to break down F bad layer. It took 5,000 years, but the money is finally there. Ray of Doom, get. And now the round should absolutely blow on by with this straight line. And we, we, we just got started with the buffs, guys. First things first, definitely a, a 4 2 0 out buff. Overclock will be next. I will hide it behind the wall so that, again, it doesn't shoot. In fact, I'll even target the foam away. One thing I guess I uh, could improve on is when I use this on the Ray of Doom, the Camo Pot, this thing gives Camo damage. If you decamo the Balloon, then, well, you're losing the plus one damage, which could help a little bit. But yes, targeting it away is good. Now we got Overclock to increase DPS even more. One thing I love seeing is a slow buildup of damage. I saw 70,000 damage right there, and we are just blowing by everything. How much damage are we getting on a single target? Like 5,000? Again, it's the pure damage buffs I'm looking for on all these towers, so... Uh, Next up would be, of course, Homeland, and then a second, two more called Arms, and then Perm Brew. It'll be interesting to see how much we can get before dying. Last time, I wasn't able to get Perm Brew up just because it was so expensive, with it being 51k, but I mean, we already just blew by the crossbows and the uh, Glaive Lords, highest rounds, uh, with no end in sight. Let's just do a quick experience to count how many nodes the uh, Bad Whale is jumping through. So I, I count three, four, five. About five or so, and keep in mind this is with another bad blocking uh, its way. If you're a Ray of Doom lover, you should know that the first target that the Ray of Doom hits always does increase damage. It's like 80 compared to much, much less if you uh, do not have it on the first target. Now, I know it's not the end of the video yet, but let me know what you guys want to see next for a uh, super buff tower on an OP map. In fact, I'm using this time to uh, actually uh, maybe incorporate some of your guys' creations uh, in these showcases too, because uh, I've been making all these maps so far, and I mean, one, it would be nice to have someone else make it. Not just to save me time, but if I hand it off to you guys, then you guys will... Uh, Probably be more artsy than me and maybe decorate the map with something. As long as it doesn't, you know, interfere with the testing. That's the most important thing. So yes, if you also have a suggestion for towers, feel free to also leave, like, a, a map code link if you decide to make one. But make sure it's actually the longest and best map for that tower because I'm going to be very stingy. If the nodes aren't the absolute longest for a certain tower, then sadly, no can do. 
That said, though, there's definitely several towers that, like, have the... require the exact same layout of a map to uh, have it be its best possible map. Like, for example, the straight line map, it could also work for the Cross of Master. I just redid it because, again, the nodes increased. But there is so much potential for this one, like, including the other Darling Gun pads, although if I wanted the mat to work here, I'd have to widen the hedges a little bit, so ignore that. Also, you're probably wondering, why am I not buying Homeland Defense yet? Isn't it very important and very good? Yes, but I'm actually not buying it for visual re reasons right now, since I'm doing so fine against all these loans. The problem I have visually is that if you buy Homeland, every time I use the ability, there's a flash on the screen. The way to fix that is to change accessibility to 99%, but the thing is, changing it to 99% also deletes the Ray of Doom. As I guess it's considered a full map aura. Not gonna lie, I kind of wish it worked like regular towers do, and that just the beam itself gets smaller, but I guess the technology isn't there yet. Maybe in a couple years. Round 200. You bet I'm gonna count this, uh, this round to see how far uh, the bad whale takes. This will decide whether I should just go for Homeland now, or if I could, like, delay it even longer. So that's, um, 6. 16. Uh, 16 and a half until the bad whale pops. Don't know if I'd like that or not. Actually, 17 and a half, so about a third of the track. A little past that. Think that's a cause for concern? Maybe. I'm gonna just use this time to squeeze in another buff. An indirect buff, but one that will help regardless. Energizer for those 20% cooldowns everywhere. That should pay itself off in the long run. You know what? This bad whale's taking too long. I'm just gonna get homeland, and... I think you guys would probably prefer it if I did disable uh, the full screen effect. So now the Ray of Doom is doing invisible damage. But in return, you guys don't uh, have your eyes get absolutely blasted. I'll just show you guys the alternative right now if I did enable 100% speed effects. Uh, just for this round only. Yeah. Not very uh, enjoyable to look at, is it now? Spamming abilities is very exhausting, so please allow me to enable this mod that allows me to adjust some tech bots just so I can automate, automate the... Uh, process a little better, akin to all the super buffing challenges I usually do. That'll be 1.5k well spent. Now I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You know, one of the joys of Ray of Doom is definitely when there's a giant ch chunk of ZMGs, and they all pop at the same time. Watch here, for example, when all these ZMGs pop to BFBs, and then to Moabs, and then to nothing. We see a peak of up to 500,000. Because it's pierces, like, almost unlimited, it's like a thousand, which I guess you could pretty much consider unlimited. It took 220 rounds, but we now finally have afforded permanent brew. About time. Oh, that accidentally buffs my temple. Uh, right, forgot I gave range. Uh, that's, that's all good. It's all good. And if I am looking at this carefully, that is pretty much all the, uh, like, reasonably afforded buffs I can get in the game. That buffed the tower itself. I can still add Krupa Moab, which I will do at some point. I can still do Glue Storm and Brittle. It would be kind of funny if I could get $500,000, but that's not happening now that they uh, patch the uh, extra money glitch in chimps. So by all intents and purposes, this is the strongest possible Ray of Doom. Raw Ray of Doom in chimps mode, guys. I should actually note that there is still a little bit more buffing I can give to the Ray of Doom. If you watch carefully with the overclock buff, take a look. It's only about an 85 to 90% uptime. Therefore, I guess since I have extra money, we will do the thing. We'll add one more overclock buff, just so we, uh, we can... Uh, cover that 15% downtime. By now, you're probably curious about how far the bads are getting. Don't worry, I'm counting. That's 12 nodes. 16, 24, 28. Uh-oh, that's over halfway, guys. Soon the ramping will overwhelm our Ray of Doom. Is there anything we can do? Again, not much. I think we'll just go for the uh, other damage givers next. Now, that I didn't want to do for the uh, crossbow or the Glaive Lord because I want to prioritize, like, pure buffing the tower first rather than indirect buffs, so consider this a new requirement after I fill every single buff in the game. Then we're allowed to do the Glue Storm and the Screw Brutal and all that. I will keep it real though, it's likely that those like damage buffs won't make a difference because the Ray of Doom again already has really high base damage, so at best we're getting like a 10% increase on all three of them combined, but that's still pretty decent. Actually, hold up while fact-checking myself on a couple things. I noticed that you actually can't buff the first target of the Ray of Doom. It's always a constant 80, apparently. Cannot be buffed for damage or pierce. So I guess consider that even less of an increase. But of course I'm still going to get it. Because that would increase the damage if we had multiple bands on the screen. And we also just passed 500 million at this rate. I think it's pretty likely that we make it to at least around 250. That is uh, 
when there is another ramping spike. Round 250 update, we now have Glue Storm, Cripple, and we're only a couple thousand dollars away from the final damage buff, Sewer Riddle. Although, I guess if I want to double dip, I will do Embrittlement and Sewer Riddle, so maybe a couple more thousand on top of that. I'll see if we can get away with that, although right now we have to deal with uh, how many bats this round? Well, a lot of them. Sewer Riddle, and there it is. I did range because I think it has enough attack speed already. Again, that is every single possible buff in Chimps mode, minus the True Sun Guide. If I want to be extra, which I guess I will... I'll try to add uh, Embrittlements somewhere along the hedges here, too. I didn't think that far ahead when I built this map, let me just say. 28 nodes, uh, 30 nodes, uh, 32. Oh, so if we had the original node cap of 33, we very well might have reached the end at about this round. But we have, uh, well, about 15 extra bounce backs to work with, so let's see how many rounds that equates to. And that's it. I've added everything I need to add on this map here. I guess I'll do this, but it, it really doesn't matter giving the count pot since we're already stunning DDs instantly anyways with the uh, sniper. But now that I think about it, a better hero would have been Pat Fusty because he increases base damage of all towers with the ability, which would obviously do better than only extra damage DDT is. And right, it doesn't even work anymore because Drew Brittle exists, so ignore that. Now all there is to do is wait and see what round it dies to. If we can reach a billion pops before that happens, wouldn't that be something? So, Quincy's dad, have you caught up to the Rhea Doom's power yet? And you know damn well we're not gonna miss this moment. 997 million, 998, 999. Can we reach it from just these UMGs here? That should show you how much HP they have. And yes, we are. 1 billion, guys. A number so large that they have to decrease the font size. Other towers are going to try really hard if they want to beat uh, the Rhea Doom's round here. Sheesh, what is that? Four F-Bats this round? It's looking bleak. We gotta be close. Oh, yep, there it is. We got absolutely melted that round. Three of them, like, didn't even pop. Well, there it is, though. The end of an incredible run. 1.1 billion pops. Whatever is next, we'll probably not get this far, but let me know what you want to see. Subscribe for more, and stay tuned for the next one.